All right, so this is Diesel with the people. Let's try to straighten this up, maybe. <laughs> uh, not attorney, not giving legal advice. Educational purposes only. Look straight forward, never look around. So that way you can always protect yourself. Always look around so you can protect yourself by any means necessary. Use your Second Amendment. Arm yourself with knowledge. <laughs> Use your Fifth Amendment, uh, First Amendment. Get out there and research and all that kind of stuff. All right, um, so right here, we kind of left off a little bit further up, but this is backtracked a little bit, but I wanted to kind of, uh, again, I'm not an attorney. I'm not giving you a little advice. It's my opinion, okay? And my opinion is only worth a grain of salt. <laughs> Do your own research, people, uh, and quit going by hearsay. Attorneys are hearsay. A judge is a hearsay. Cops are hearsay. Do your own research, right? Everybody's hearsay, people. Okay, well, it's a law, it's a law. Well, how do you know? Did you read it? Did you comprehend it? Did you look up the definition? Did you retardo to, through the subject matter of the law? All right, man, it's not a bad word. So it just means slow. Did you slowly read it so you can clearly define the whole situation of that subject, right? We got to be careful, and this is what they're trapping us in. We're assuming we know the definitions they're using because of our ordinary everyday life. Well, they're not ordinary. They use trickery words, trickery definitions, and all that kind of stuff. So they're not ordinary. Okay, we become a creature of habit, but what we should be speaking like really is like the attorneys. This should be just basic knowledge through school, speaking and writing like attorneys do <laughs> in this day and age. <laughs> All right, um, sorry, going off on a little thing there. Um, anyway, if you don't want to hear my little going off on the thing, well, by golly, uh, go to the Legal Beagle and check this out without my interruptions. That way you can rush right through the whole two and a half hours without me interrupting. <laughs> Uh, again, this is for my education and for me to kind of go through there and listen. Retardo, right? I want to hear what the judge is speaking when she's been challenged, right? Because I may be in that seat one of these days. I want to hear how he's speaking to her because I may be in his seat. I want to hear what the prosecutor or the claimant attorney is saying. That way I can speak the way the man over there is to fully comprehend and to be able to punch through them. Because <laughs> I want to use my Second Amendment to protect myself. <laughs> right? Um, just for educational purposes, F-U-K. All right? The true definitions to strike are to move back and forth. You can strike with words. Okay, you want to get your point across. You want to be direct. You do not want to be hesitated in, right? Um, truth always hurts, and especially when you talk to the liars like in here. <laughs> All right, let's go. Sorry. Counsel, which means they still represent themselves, but they have a lawyer who's there standing up. Um, oh, uh, I would right just before them, right? You don't have a right to counsel. Uh, sitting beside you. Yes, you do. That's what councils are. I, you know, and if I have a council and I, it's my choosing, I can choose my wife. Why? Because she's my council. We've been married 31 years. She's my council through life as I'm her council through life. And we together counseled our offsprings to be in honor. Whether they did it or not, they had their own mind and they got free will. Uh, sometimes you just can't smack them hard enough to get that free will out of them. <laughs> uh, I crack myself up sometimes. All right, let's go. Okay. Also, they should assist you. Do understand that you don't have a right to stand by counsel either? I understand that that's the court's position. Yeah. I just... And I said it on a previous video, I just love how he clearly 
told her that, right? I understand your position. Um, basically, what I'm saying is, you, you you may say that, I just don't agree with it, right? I, I want my wife to sit beside me and to instruct my movements through the court if she's knowledge enough to do so. I don't want no attorney and uh, or other people that I may not trust as much as I do my wife or whatever. Uh, you, you guys get in the picture there. Um, do you realize that if you decide to take the witness stand, a judge may require you to ask a question and answer the question and ask another question rather than just stating in one long narrative? Um, I agree with that. Much. Okay. Um, has anyone made any threats or any promises to you to have you represent yourself at this time? No, the only threats I've received were from um, prosecutors, judges, and um, law enforcement. Okay, and was that to make you represent? Now, argument's sake, right? I just did a video just before this talk about how they wouldn't let nobody watch the court. Well, it's because he's calling them out. And their lies and deceits. He's calling them out. And the courts cannot have honest people calling out their lies. They just can't have it. That yourself, or do you mean as part of why you're in custody? The only reason I'm representing myself is because of the ongoing threats by police officers, prosecutors, and judges. But if you're asking me specifically about my representing myself pro se right now, no, there are no <laughs> threats directly related to that. Okay, thank you. I appreciate that clarification. Um, I, one other thing that we talked a little bit about, we talked about court rules and criminal procedures. There's also the rules of evidence. So what's allowed in for a trial and what might not be allowed in for a trial. Do you understand that you have to abide by the rules of evidence and are you familiar with them at all? I am painfully familiar with the rules of evidence and how Seattle Municipal Court judges and prosecutors, including Katrina Altman, or no, sorry, um, Sarah, um, What's her name? Sarah. She's got it. Um, Sarah McDonald. She's now a prosecutor with the King County Prosecuting Attorney's Office, and I'm familiar with the fact that judges and prosecutors violate the rules of evidence in order to violate my rights. I would hope that if a trial actually occurs here, that all parties will play by the rules. And see, this is where pro saves have been having problems at. They are not the ones playing by the rules. They cannot have the little people stand up for their rights. You know, they want this uh, circle, uh, whole class of the bar union uh, to be in control. They want you to call them. All right. And if you don't call them, by gosh, we're going to play dirty. All right. Mr. Levin, do we have the maximums in the standard range? Yeah. So count one from stalking, class B felony. Maximum term is 10 years imprisonment and or a $20,000 fine. Uh, the other counts are attempt to, attempting to elude swimming police vehicles. Each of those are class C felonies punishable by a. Now, I said, think about this, and I'm just going to repeat it just in case some people missed in the last video, right? Uh, the video that was the news station of him being arrested, all that by SWAT team, that there was alleged wife and alleged shooting at his house, well, he's getting charged for stalking, and yet she was allegedly at his house by the officer's claims to the news station. So why are they pressing stalking charges if she was over there? Hmm, what a quandary. Five years in prison. And Your Honor, has the court completed the colloquy and has the court fully recognized my right to proceed pro se yet? Um, I'm just close, Mr. Benson. I, I just the one final thing that I need is the standard range, just so you understand the possible jeopardy that you're putting in. So what Mr. Lavin just read was the maximum for each one of these crimes, but there also is a presumptive um, sentence depending on your criminal history and the seriousness. And is the court's position that um, if those charges were valid and if I was actually convicted that all of and I hate interrupting again because there's just so little bitty nitpicky things going on, right? 
But sit think about this. He's in a case. That being said, let's just say he was stalking. Great. Okay. Um, let's just say five years ago he was charged for stalking and sentencing. Okay. But what does that five years ago charges has to do with today's charges? You know, uh, it's the things they do to keep people locked up for the prison uh, for profit. Uh, thank you, Ronald Reagan, by the way. Uh, you just made everything grow out extremely high in a prison captivity. Okay? And making officers actually lie to create revenue for the prison. Uh, anyway, tangent. But it, this is a totally different case. It has nothing to do with your past. Now, obviously, you know, if you had a bad relationship, you can kind of hold that in your mind and not trust them. But this is a court, and it's a it's a case-by-case -case basis. And everybody's agreeing that you're allowed to bring five cases in the one case that happened 20 years ago. It's ridiculous. The charges could run consecutively. So they presumably run concurrently. Um, so they would run together. The state can ask for what is called an exceptional sentence. So something they have to find a legal basis to do something outside of the normal to run them um, consecutively. So it's a possible that there has to be a legal basis to do so. And the state would have to provide you notice of that um, and prove that. Whatever the legal basis. This is the We have a standard range. Yeah, I'm presuming that he was convicted of all counts. His standard range on the felony stocking would be 13 to 17 months. There are aggregation factors charged with respect to count one. So, so count if count. those were found, they okay. also have discretion to uh, imprison up to the 10 years. And that would be the governing standard range, assuming what the court already articulated about current sentences. But with respect to the attempt to elude that. All right, and so Mr. Bensick, did you hear what his possible standard ranges were for, for these crimes? Uh, yes, Your Honor. And when I talked about an exceptional sentence, that is exactly what Mr. Uh, Lavin was bringing up, is that count one, the state is alleging two aggravating factors. Uh, one is um, committing the offense within the sight or sound of uh, a minor child um, and part of an ongoing pattern of psychological, physical, or sexual abuse of the same victim, and that the conduct manifested deliberate cruelty. Um, let me see. I don't know. And the other one was an, on, an ongoing um, pattern of domestic yeah. violence. Both of those are what the state's alleging. Um, those could allow, if they're proven, that could allow the court to go above the So give something more all the way up to the maximum. Do you understand that? I understand that that's what you're saying. Okay. And it still is your wish to represent yourself? Yes, I intend for truth to prevail in this matter and the actual criminals, including the kidnapper of my son, Jess Pareto, and it's supposedly the star witness of the prosecution, her perjury, and narcissism and her child abuse and kidnapping of my son will be disclosed. All right, so I'm going to bring your request to go pro se after asking you all of these questions. Now, the next step is arraignment, but my understanding is that you want to have some motions prior to arraignment. I have some objections to note the record. My understanding is that the court does not have time at this juncture to um, hear any motions um, that I might make orally. Um, you can correct me if I'm... Um, That's correct. I okay. guess what I was going to say is that we can either do the arraignment and you note your objections, or what we could do is set, continue that part of it and give you some time so that you can have your motions be heard prior to arraignment, if that's what you would rather do. Well... Uh, and what the court is still standing there, which I appreciate, but you're excused, Mr. Cullen, at this point. Good luck. Just quickly, uh, I ended up with a little bird and finding the cop and see what Mr. Goldsworth was concerned about signing. Yeah, I mean, like, yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
Uh, we're going to go ahead and pause there for a second. All right. Uh, end it here because, well, I stressed it out way longer than I should have. My fault. My bad. Uh, basically, the people news. Bye, y'all.